My wife does not have a boyfriend. <laughs> what up everyone? Shaquille Mahjoudi here for CBS Sports and you know who this is. He is the UFC's number 10 ranked welterweight contender fighting Jeff Neal at UFC 298 on Saturday. Rumor has it they're still looking for Neil Magny's leg after this man kicked it into the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Machado, Gary, how's it going, bro? How are you, man? You good? I'm like doing that, well. I'm doing well. Uh, stacked card this Saturday. Looking forward to it. Before we start, you're a Rick and Morty fan, correct? For sure. Okay, rate my uh, Pickle Rick pipe on a scale of 1 to 10. Here. <laughs> I honestly, I, I love Rick and Morty. It's so funny. It's so ridiculous. Watching it, I just think, like, what were the guys on or what were they doing to write the show? That's mainly where my brain goes. Every time I watch it, I'm just like, this is genius. It's unhinged. I love it. Well, I, told, I, told my, I told my eight-year-old about the first episode. I remember we seen, we were in Florida, and we got in an Uber, and the Uber had Pickle Rick on the dashboard, on the, uh, the it had a Pickle Rick on the, uh, the uh, rearview mirror. And he was like, what's that? And I was like, that's Pickle Rick. Oh. And he's like, who's Pickle Rick? I was like, oh, I have a whole story to tell you. Oh, man. That is like my favorite like, part of parenthood when I get honestly, there. It's just the funniest thing. I love it. It was. It's just, yeah, it, it's it's mind-blowing. I love it. Uh, AJ McKee's recently on, uh, that's what he watches when he's like exercising and training now. So shout out to all the Rick and Morty fans out there. Yeah, I don't know what that's about, but you know. Good show, Rick and Morty's fire. It's fire. Yeah. I've watched it like three times. Hey, uh, you've got this Jeff Neal fight coming up. Obviously, this was rebooked. I saw you guys sort of cross paths. Uh, it was a very friendly interaction. What are the vibes <laughs> like between you and Jeff this time relative to heading into the first fight? I don't know what his vibes are. It's it's I, 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 He seems to be pretty cool. Truth is, I don't know. He could absolutely hate me. And it's just being nice to me in person and showing me respect. I've walked over to him. I said, hello. Best to look at the way he could. I've given him the respect in person. Doesn't mean that I... Look, me making a t-shirt of his mugshot doesn't mean I don't respect him. It means I'm selling a fucking fight. How many people knew about the Jeff Neal fight before the mugshot versus after the mugshot? Seems like Ian Gary's doing his job correctly, right? Yep. That's the way I look at it. Um, look, I'm excited to fight Jeff. He's a tough test. He's a big. He's a he's a a big, a big energy when it comes to big shots. Yep. And it's one of those people like people don't want to fight Jeff Neal because he can knock you unconscious. I'm excited to go out there and prove how good I am against him. Yeah, I love this matchmaking. I've been raving about it all week. I think it makes sense in the sense that you're both elite strikers but have very different styles of striking. Mm. I like yeah. that it's a proper escalation of challenge for you. I think it makes sense yeah. that Jeff has to defend his spot. Great matchmaking all around on this one. Uh, without giving away too much of the game plan, I know we can't do that. Just analyzing the fight quickly, what's the biggest advantage you have in this fight? Where does he possess the biggest strength or the most challenge? I believe Jeff has the biggest strength simply in the fact that he has a cannon for a left hand. I believe that that's it. Like you look at all his fights, he just hits people hard and it either breaks them or they fall. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then to counter that, the biggest advantage for me is, well, there's many, but the biggest one I would say is my fight IQ. I'm not going to be in the spot he wants to be in. My instinctual, natural defensive mode is unrivaled in the game and it's only going to take more time to prove it to people you can't hit something like a cannon if it's not there to be hit hey how much better have you has your life quality of life gotten since you turned off your instagram notifications <laughs> so i i here's the here's the reason i turned it off i think it was a great move by the way it's, it's a phenomenal move right it's a you're correct it's a phenomenon. I'm a, I'm a very, I'm, look, I'm a very intelligent person and I have a very intelligent team behind me. And there was a reason we did it. And I remember making the call. Me and my wife were talking about it. Me and my team were talking about it. Like, did we just turn it off? You know, there was talks about engagement. There's talks about like, oh, people aren't going to really like engage the same way. They're not really going to hold that same value. And I was like, look, I want to post this photo of me and my son. If I post this photo of me and my son, I'm putting 
all the money I've ever earned in my lifetime on the first comment being, is the son yours? Mm. Did you ask the host? All this negativity of me posting a photo of me and my little boy. And that was a nail in the coffin. Because I'm like, you can attack me all you want. But when you start attacking my family and my wife and my baby, it's off limits. And the truth is, I don't think I'll ever turn the comments back on. I know Taylor Swift turned her comments off in 2019 and hasn't turned them on since. Looks like she's doing pretty well. Shout out to the Swifties. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, it's one of those things. I remember Instagram were debating whether or not to turn off comments because of mental health reasons mm -hmm. at one point in time. Um, I can't remember what the exact outcome of that was, but I, well, I feel like they off. don't things like uh, they don't show how many likes com uh, posts have and stuff. Like they've kind of tried to yeah. reduce the exactly and this is the thing part of it a little bit yeah yeah the but the truth is yeah but the truth is the negativity switching off your comments and your notifications honestly it changes the world because for me my phone my instagram is a business it's for me it's to show the world the insides into my lifestyle where i am in the world who i'm training with where i'm traveling to what fun i'm having i want to excite fans, kids, people who want to be where, like in my shoes at some point in the future, people who want to be fighters in the future and want to travel the world and learn from the best. I want to give those people like the insights of how cool it is, how awesome it is, where you can travel to. Oh, and also you can do it with your family. You don't have to do it on your own. And for me, that's important. I don't need to wake up and have negativity or see negativity. I just need to be present with my team, present with my family and enjoy the journey, enjoy the process. Do you think that, you know, you are, you, you definitely have a mind for how to drum up interest. People are going to debate how effective it is, but you make an effort where most fighters don't make an effort. And that's how why my name... Neg Sorry, how much of this negativity do you think is... I know it gets out of hand, but I guess, would you have done anything different knowing that putting yourself out there the way you do is going to attract that kind of negativity. Not in a million years. Not in a million years. Look, I'm number 10 in the world. I haven't even touched the potential of where I know I'm going to get to. I haven't touched the limelight of where I know is possible in my career. And yet, I'm the most talked about fighter on this fight card. I was the most talked about fighter on the last fight card. Everything I'm doing, everything I'm... I'm saying everything I'm everywhere I'm traveling, the people I'm training with is interesting to the fans. It's interesting to the media. I'm doing everything right in my way. There is nothing that went wrong other than people flipping, flipping the truth into lies and bullshit and running with it. Okay. You know, the whole world right now is playing a game of Chinese whispers where they don't actually know the fucking truth. May I take a, st a jab at it? Because I actually had this written down. So, and, and I Go know ahead. there's obviously a portion of the audience that is, you know, trolling in bad faith with, your, with your family, your family dynamics and stuff. But I do think that leads to some people actually misunderstanding. So tell me when I misspeak. I want to get this on the record. I'm in the business of sharing information. Machado like is your wife's maiden name. Her father's name, last name. You, her mother's name. Her mother's last name. Her mother's name. So okay. it's her mother's name. And in Brazil, when Brazilians get married, they usually take the mother and the father's name. So mm -hmm. it's a Brazilian thing. It's a South American thing where they take the same, like they don't want to lose connections to their family. Perfect. So okay. they take both names. So there's, there's where you go. Love it. Thank you. See, that's why we're doing it together. There Part you go. two. Part of your decision to take on your white uh, Machado in your name is so that your son and your stepson could have a joint last name. Truth is, it's kind of the only reason. Obviously, having the link to Brazil is amazing. And the Brazilian side of my wife's family, which is the amount of Brazilian family she has, is unbelievable. And to be able to call them family, I'm very happy, very proud, very grateful. But the truth is, I only did it because I wanted my son and my stepson to really feel connected. I didn't want them going through life with two separate surnames. I feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect. And if you guys want to be brothers, I want to make sure that you guys have that same connection. That was the main reason for me. And then number three, as it pertains to 
your stepson's father, your wife's ex-husband. Yeah. He mm-hmm. is a highly regarded nutritionist. That was part yeah. of your intention, including him in your camp. And it was so that he could be more involved in his son's life while you're traveling the world with the family. Yes, place. and I will just I will just give another different insights, but all of that is correct. I mean, like we try, we try. All of all of it's all of it's perfect. So thank you for doing your research for fact checking. <laughs> um, so the the main reason behind my wife's ex husband was he is an elite performance nutritionist, and he's very fucking good at what he does, right? To the point that which we've done every single weight cut for the UFC, and they've been easier and easier and easier every single time. We've worked phenomenally together, and I'm very proud of the work we've done. Now, in that same regard, he is a professional in one regard. He's also the father of my wife's son. Mm-hmm. And I never want to be a wedge between a father and a son. I never want that in my conscience. Yeah. So I know that we're going on this adventure to travel the world. Hey, dude, want to travel the world? Be my nutritionist and we can all do this together. We can, you can, you can come and see your son whenever you want. You guys can be the, the two of them are going to Disney this morning. That's sick. I Do you know what that. I mean? And that's the energy I have. I want to be a good human. I want to be a good man. And I never want to be a wedge between a father and a son. Because I know if someone was to be a wedge between me and my son, I'd, I'd be livid. Mm-hmm. I'd be livid. And I'd hate that person. And I never want that on my conscience. So the truth is, my wife does not have a boyfriend. <laughs> my wife has an ex-husband who has, and they have a past. I understand that. I'm aware of that. Everyone has a fucking past in their life. Everyone does. I don't want to be a wedge between my wife and her ex-husband and her kid and have them go through battles and arguments because I don't want them around. No, I'm a bigger man than that. I understand that there's a child in all of this and he deserves to be prioritized. Yeah. Well, Ian, you know, through speaking with you, and I, I don't, you know, obviously I don't know you very well. This is our first interaction. I think that it's fine if people dislike your approach to trash talk in the fight game, but they really conflate the two things. Like you can, you can be a good family man and a shit disturber in the public eye. And I, well, yeah. what shit have I really disturbed? You know, I mean, you talk trash, and inevitably that's gonna rub people the yeah, wrong way. But that's well, sure. the nature of that's the fight let's, game. Let's, though. let's 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 go back, right? Jeff Neal. What's the in, most interesting thing about Jeff Neal? His mugshot. All right, I use it to sell a fight. I inevitably got him to pull out of a fight because of that, right? Let's go back again to, let's go back then to fucking Neil Magny. Neil Magny. People are going nuts that I brought his family into saying he beats his kid. Did I say that? Or did Neil say that? And I was livid because I was sat with my little boy when I was listening to the interview and went, nobody called him up on that? No one at the press conference went, hey, dude, did you just say you beat your kid? Whether he meant it for serious or meant it as a joke, the words that came out of his mouth, the only person that Neil Magny can be annoyed about is himself. I just pulled him out on his own words. So the truth is, I'm just calling people out of their own actions and their own accords in life. I'm not really going into the depth, dark detail that I could go into with ammunition that I've I've always armed myself with. Ian, I do want, I do, before I let you go here, I always like to end this on some like stuff away from the fight game, give you a break if you have time. Just gonna run you through through some rapid fire, okay? All right. All right. First off, who is your favorite James Bond? Oh, it's so tough. Why do you ask me about James Bond? Uh, Because I know you got the James Bond aesthetic in mind this week. The Bond Bond? Yeah. The Bond Bond? That's what we rock on. Um, This fight's around Sean Connery, but the truth is, my favorite's um Daniel Craig, and I don't, I know it's a bit controversial because he's not the 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 cleanest of the bonds, you know. Like Sean Connery is, is probably the most elite bond. But my favorite's Daniel Craig. There's just something about him that I just I love watching. Yeah. You know, the Sean Connery respect though tells me that you know what you're talking about, despite Oh your for age. sure, yeah. Well this one's all, this one's based off Sean Connery. This yeah, like this fight's through. Who should be the next James Bond? I would love, and I know it, it never happened, but I got very, very excited for it at a certain point in time when Idris Elba was meant to be the next James Bond. I was very excited, and, and it was the comments of like a black Bond, oh, we're going to go off the, 
no, English isn't just white people anymore. It's like it's so much more diverse now. And I got really excited about Idris Elba playing James Bond. I would love to see it go in that way. And I think it would be I think it'd be amazing. But especially like Idris Elba is is a phenomenal actor. Agreed. I loved him in, in Thor. I think he's amazing. I would love to see him be James Bond. DJs, kickboxes, man of many talents. Uh, if you attended Hogwarts, which house would you be assigned to? I'm good hearted, but I'm very, very mischievous and I will cause a lot of trouble. So I guess you could say it, it's obviously a flip between. Oh, I don't know. I feel like for some reason I'd be in Slytherin. You know what? You know what? I think the fans will appreciate that answer. So I feel like some. I feel like for some reason I would be. There's. I feel like there's enough like uh, self reflection there. I feel like anyone. Who, yeah. Who, like anyone who says Gryffindor has too much of a hero complex, and I would say Gryffindor. So I know yeah, I feel. I feel like. I feel like the dark in me would take over a little bit. Last one. What is the best and worst pizza topping? The worst pizza topping, I hate spice. So I'll say it's like fucking jalapenos or something like that. Some people put that pizza blow my mind. Like you see them there sometimes. Like who chooses to put that in a pizza? Like I want to enjoy it, not burn the mouth out myself. Oh, um, it's the white man in you, Ian. Oh, bro, <laughs> I, I can't deal. I can't I, no, no. I love my favorite food on the planet. It's Indian. It's it's my favorite food on the planet. But I ain't choosing a, like a burning yeah. red hot cheese. You got to order like mild, food. is what you're saying. Huh? No, I'm just I ain't I ain't I ain't l allowing my taste buds to go through that like right. excruciating pain. <laughs> I'd like to enjoy my meal. Um, and then the best pizza topping for me. <sighs> Do you know what I've, I've I've been really getting into it lately is peppers because there's a different smell on them. When the pizza has peppers on the top of it and it yeah, doesn't, and it's not for the taste, it's for the smell of the pizza. Okay, well, that, that influences that, your palate. Smells important for sure. Yeah. So when it comes out the oven, when it comes out the oven, you open that box and it's got no peppers on it versus peppers. I'm like, this one that just, oh, that smells good. Like you get that little whiff when you open the box, it just comes into your face. Like, oh, there you go. There we go. Ian, uh, I've, ta I I've taken too much of your time today, and I want to leave you with the <laughs> last words. So I'll do my part very quick. Guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. Please subscribe, tap the bell, thumbs up, all that good stuff. Let us know best pizza topping, worst pizza topping, plus your official prediction for Jeff Neal versus Ian Gary. That takes place at UFC 298 this Saturday in Anaheim. Ian, if there's anything you want to tell the people, the floor is yours, man. Just get ready for the speed. Get ready for the elusivity. Because I'm going to be like a magician out there. They're not going to be able to, he's not going to be able to touch me. And then all of a sudden, it's going to be out.